Welcome to Lesson 55. This is uh, continuing with uh, cables, signal distribution and cables. So like a cable that you might hitch up from your satellite dish to your, to your house or something. Um, what do you call those? Signal cables? Are they coaxial cables? I'm not sure exactly, but they're cables. They're special cables. And they have half-life phenomena. That's what I do know. They have a half-life phenomena. So remember last time we were talking about a cable might have like two half-lives per 100 feet? And what that meant was that if you took a 100-foot piece of cable, the power would have would undergo two half-lives, which means whatever it was here, it would be cut in half twice by the time you get to the other end. Two half-lives per 100 feet meant if you had 100 feet, the 100 would become, well, 50 is cutting it in half once, and then you'd have to cut the 50 in half to get to 25. So notice two half-lives means actually divide by 4 on your input power. So that's that's a, a behavior you have to know about when you're playing around with these cables. And uh, last time we did it purely by intuition. We were just counting half-lives per 100 feet and playing around. Uh, today we're going to get some formulas to throw at you. But uh, before I can even get to the formulas, we need to talk about this new word, decibels. You've heard the word before, but we need to explore what exactly does, do people mean when they say decibels. So here's the key idea. If you turn the knob down on your machine, it might be an ultrasound machine, it might be some other kind of machine, but if you turn the knob down by three decimals, what have you just done? You have not done, you have not just subtracted three from the power. Nope. Turning the knob down by three decibels means cutting the power in half. So it's related to this whole half-life stuff again. Three decibels equals one half-life. So if you turn something down by three decibels, it means you actually cut the power in half. And by the way, if you go the other way, if you turn the power up by three decibels, you actually have to double the power. Okay. So this is a weird enough concept that I want to try to draw a little bit of a picture of it. So let's come up onto some paper here. And I'm going to draw me like a little graph here of some sort. So there's my x, y axes. And I'll have decibels go on the x axis. And then this will be the power going on the y axis. right? And then over here we'll have our little knobby. There's my little knobby. It's got the little thingy on there. And we'll say that this is my decibels dial on my machine. And so when I'm at zero decibels, what's my power? Well, here's another interesting thing to say about decibels. There's, it does, zero decibels does not mean zero power. It does not mean that. Zero decibels means you've got some sort of a baseline power. It's kind of like it means you're at idle, so to speak. <laughs> so there is a certain level of power. What should I call this? Baseline? I don't want to, I'm going to crowd up my graph if I do that. I know what I'll do. I'll turn it sideways. Baseline, here we go. That's my baseline power right there. That is. <laughs> That's my baseline power. So um, when you've got the knob set at zero decibels, you're at your baseline power. Now let's say you go, oh, let's say you go, let's say you go, Let's say you go down by three decibels. So that means you turn the knob over to here. How can I do this? Oh, that almost worked. So I turn the knob over to here, right? So now I'm, I've subtracted three decibels. Well, what that has done to the power when I subtract three decibels, so that's zero decibels there, that's minus three there. Now let me do my axis a little bit better than that. Let's say that this is minus 3, and this is minus 6, and this is minus 9, and so on. So when you turn your power down by 3 decibels, your baseline power is now half of what it used to be. So it used to be whatever, now it's half of that. And if you turn it down to another 3 decibels, which means you've now turned it down 6 decibels, well, that means you cut it in half twice, and so... You know, whatever that is, it got cut in half twice. So if you call this a one, this will be a half of it. This will be down to a fourth of whatever it used to be, and so on. And I think you get the pattern, right? If I were to turn it down to minus nine decibels, so I've spun the knob all the way down to, to minus nine decibels. Well, now the power is half of what it used to be. It used to be a fourth, now it's an eighth, and so on. So you get this same kind of a 
half-life swoopage curve, if you were to join the tops together, that we were playing with last time. Okay, And then, let me emphasize, you can turn the knob the other way, usually. So if you were to turn it to plus three decibels, so take your here knobby, and it used to be at zero, but we're going to move it the other way now. We're going to go to plus three decibels. That means, so that would be, I guess it would be over here. Don't worry about negative being on the right, positive being on the left, doesn't matter. But when you raise it by three decibels, your power that used to be one is now doubled. It's now two. And if you were to turn it up to plus six decibels, it would be double that. It would be like four and so on. So you get this idea. So again, this 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 shape, this basic shape continues in both directions. It's kind of like, well, if you're going this way, it would be sort of like the, the bunny rabbit population growing up, except we're going the other way. We're decaying like this. So anyway, that's, that's, so there's two things you got to keep in mind. So the one thing to keep in mind is that zero decibels does not mean zero power. Zero decibels means you're at idle. You've got some sort of a baseline power level or whatever it is. So like when they talk about zero decibels, when they're talking about sound, um, like when they, you know, you know how to measure sounds in decibels, right? So when they say zero decibels, what they mean is the power level is just barely at the threshold of human hearing. So you can just barely hear it. Now there is a certain power associated with that. So that they call the baseline power. It's not that it's, you, you know, zero power. You know, some waves we can't hear, you know, but anyway, so again, zero decibels does not mean zero power. It means baseline power. What's particularly meaningful is the adding or subtracting of decibels. And again, if you add three decibels, you double the power. But if you subtract three decibels, you cut the power in half. Every time you subtract three, you cut it in half again. You subtract three again, you cut it in half again, just like half-lives from last time. Okay, That's what decibels means. And that's the rule of thumb. Three decibels equals a half-life. I used to have to teach this kind of stuff to uh, dwell to ultrasound text. And this was the main thing they wanted me to emphasize. Just make sure they know that three decibels is, is either doubling or having the power. And then you could go get riches in ultrasound tech. Anyway. So let's look at some specific examples here. So uh, these are just, these are short examples, but I just want to make sure we've drilled this in, right? So the power was 100 kilowatts. So you might think of this as like at one end of the cable or something, whatever. I'm not even going to draw that. So the power was 100, but we turned the dial, the dial down by three decibels. Well, minus three decibels means basically one half-life. Going by this phrase here, three decibels is a half-life. So since we dropped it by three decibels, what that means is one half-life. So if it was 100, it must be 50, because that's one half-life. See? That's how it works. Example two, it dropped by six decibels. Well, three decibels is a half-life, so this means two half-lives, right? Every three decibels gets you a half-life, so three plus three is six, so we get two half-lives. So uh, if it was 300 kilowatts, we have to drop it in half twice. So the 300, maybe I'll put that over here like this. The 300, come on you, the 300 that we started with, we have to cut it in half twice. That's one half-life, this makes two half-lives. So we end up with 75 kilowatts on the way out. Hmm. You might want to pause and try the next three yourself. Try examples three, four, five yourself. And then come back and see if you're see if you're hip to what I'm saying here. Okay. What do we got here? The power was 800 kilowatts. Okay. It dropped, oh we're we're told, we're not told the decibels. We're we're asked how many decibels. Well it dropped to 25 kilowatts. The 800 went down to 25. Now you know that the decibels has to do with half-lives. Decibels are counting half-lives. So if you want to count decibels, you have to count half-lives. Because every half-life will be three decibels. 
So you have to count half flights. So I have to say, well, I started at 100, huh? Okay. Now keep your eye out for this. Kilowatts, kilowatts. Okay, they're both the same units, right? If this was kilowatts and milliwatts, that we'd have to cut in half a whole lot more. But anyway, we're going from 800 to 125. So there's one half-life to get to 400. There's another half-life to get to 200. There's another half-life to get to 100. There's another half-life to get to 50. There's another half-life to get to 25. There we are. We made it from 100 to 25. Now, how many half-lives is that? You count the transitions, the jumps, the arrows. One half-life, two, three, four, five. This is five half-lives. And then go back to our definition over here. Each half-life is three decibels. So if I got five half-lives and every one of them is three decibels, I go five times three and I get 15 decibels. This is a drop of 15 decibels. When the power goes down, the decibels drop. 15 decibels. Five half-lives is 15 decibels. Example four, the power was 50 and it was raised by six. Ooh, watch out for the words, right? Raised by six. Well, again, every three decibels is a half-life. Six is three plus three, which means we did it twice, which means we're talking two half-lives. I'm saying half-life, except it was raised. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't, it didn't drop. It actually went up. So because we raised it by six decibels, that makes the power goes up. So I'm going to say here, actually, two, can I say double lives? I've never heard that said ever in my life. Two double lives? I don't know what you say. Two half lives backwards. So <laughs> you end at 50 is the point. So before you were 50, you were 100. That was one half life ago. And before you were 100, you were 200. That was two half lives ago, which was six decibels ago. And so here's your answer, 200 watts. Cool. So you see how this all flows the same way as what we were doing last time. You can keep track of whether you're starting at this or ending at this and so on. Okay. Now we're talking. Example five. See, last time I kind of, eh, I don't want to say I fibbed, but I kind of threw you a bum steer a little bit when I said that cables are rated in half-lives per 100 feet. That ain't necessarily exactly the way they word it. Uh, what they actually do is they give you the decibels per 100 feet. So this is for real. This is what they'll put on the box. How many decibels per 100 feet? But now you know how to interpret that, right? So let me get that out of the way. Let's get a different color going. So 12 decibels per 100 feet means how many half-lives in 100 feet? Remember that every three decibels is a half-life. So I got three, six, nine, 12. I got four half-lives per 100 feet. And all of a sudden the homework problem looks the same as yesterday's. We've got four half-lives per 100 feet. So the input power is 200. Let's go like maybe, I don't know, 20, 40, 60, 80, call that 100. 20, 40, 60, 80, call that 100. Okay, so that's our power. And we're starting at 200, which is right there. Now, we've got a 100 foot wire. And we're gonna have, for every 100 feet, we're gonna have four half-lives. So, so we're gonna have one half-life at 25 feet. 50, 75, and then we'll get out to 100 feet. That'll be four half-lives. Okay, so this is my length going this way. Okay, so so every 25 feet is a half-life, right? Four and 100 feet, so every 25 feet is a half-life. And so that tells me what to do. The 200 becomes 100 by the time you get to the 25-foot mark. And then when you get to the 50-foot mark, your 100 is now a 50. And then when you get to the 75-foot mark, your 50 is now a 25. And when you finally get over here to the 100 foot mark, your 25 is now 12.5. What were these? Milliwatts, okay. So you're at 12.5 milliwatts. So notice I, I didn't have to use a formula. You don't have to use a formula. You can do it intuitive. You can do it the way we did it yesterday, All, but you just have to know what decibels means. And again, every three decibels is a half-life. So if that's what you do with your decibels, hey, every half-life is three decibels. Hey, every three decibels is a half-life. You can do all of today's problems the same as yesterday. Just count half-lives and so on. But, and you'll see that there's formulas here. Let's ignore those for just a little bit longer and look at example six. I want to do this one the intuitive way as well. 
or at least try. It says there's eight decibels per hundred feet. See, now there's where we get a problem, right? Eight decibels per hundred feet. Well, here's the thing. How many half-lives is eight decibels? Well, you'd have to divide by three, and you'd get two and two-thirds half-lives per hundred feet. Two and two-thirds half-lives per hundred feet. Huh. So we'd have to go one half-life, we'd have to go two half-lives, and we'd have to not quite go three half-lives. So what's that going to do? Well, let's uh, just start with the 80 milliwatts, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. We'll call this my 80 right here, and that's kind of a mess. I'll get rid of that. So 10, 20, 30, 40, that's my 50, 60, 70, 80. So that's my 50 mark. Start at 80. If you cut it in half once, the 80 becomes a 40. If you cut it in half twice, the 40 becomes a 20. If you cut it in half again, the 20 becomes a 10. Okay, so I can try to connect this with like a smooth curve. But here's the problem we're going to face. We actually come out two and two-thirds half-lives. So you have to kind of read the coordinate of the point in there. And you say, I don't know, it's between 20 and 10. I don't know, you want to say 12 or 13? What are these watts again? Milliwatts? Something like that? Okay, so now you see why we have to have the formulas. We have the formulas for the special cases where um, you don't come out with an even number of half-lives. You come out with two and a half half-lives, two and two-thirds half-lives, whatever. If you don't come out with an even number of half-lives, you can either just guesstimate, like I did here, and say, well, according to my graph, it should be something like, I don't know, maybe 12, maybe 13, something like that. But if you want the exact answer, the exact mathematical answer, well, then we got formulas. So which formula should we use here? What will be P out? Looks like we should use that formula, right? Maybe in a different color even. It's hard to find a good color these days. What will be P out? Grab the formula for P out. Here's how that formula works. I'm going to just copy it over here. The output power is, and what does that say? It says take the input power on top and divide it by 10, and that's an exponent on the 10. And it's not decibels, it's decibels over 10. So our input power was 80. 10 to the... Now how many decibels did we drop? We dropped 8 decibels. It said 8 decibels per 100 feet. And we had 100 feet, so it was 8 decibels. So my exponent is going to be not 8, but 0.8. Why the 0.8? Because of this divide by 10 effect. So if you want to divide something by 10, you just slide the decimal back once. To me, I'd rather put the 0.8 there. To me, that's a lot neater than if I had written this. You know, I, I could write it this way to the 8 tenths. But you don't really want to do that, do you? That'd be harder to type and everything. So I just divide by 10 right away. I say, okay, so the exponent's supposed to be one-tenth of the decibels. So take your 8 and call it a point 0.8. That's one-tenth of the decibels. And now it's a calculator. It's a calculator. So I grab out my calculator. I say 80, and I divide it by 10 to the power of point 0.8, and I hit the equals button. And, ha, huh, this is great. See that 12 or 13 that I was thinking? You know what the real answer is. 12 point, well, if I go to one decimal place, it's 12.7. Not bad, huh? Not bad. Turns out these formulas work. Awesome city. So the good news about the formulas is you're either asked to solve for P out or P in or decibels. This so you just grab whichever formula you need, and you plug in what you need, what you have, to figure it out. So um, I should make a, a, a comment here. This formula is for the drop-in decibels, because remember, zero decibels does not mean zero power. Um, turns out you get zero decibels whenever P in and P out are the same, whatever they are. Try it. If you put 10 over 10 into this formula and take the log of 10 over 10, you'll get zero. So... Whenever the P in and the P out are the same, that's zero decibels. So drop in decibels.
Let's do this one. So here we have a drop in power. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. We have a drop in power from 80 down to 2.5. What's the drop in decibels? Well, maybe first I'll grab the formula. The drop in decibels is, according to the formula, it's 10 times the log of P in over P out. Which means 10 times the logarithm of P in is 80, P out is 2.5. Now, here's a note worth noting. Make sure units match. When you plug in the P in and the P out, make sure they're exactly the same kinds of units. Here we're safe. Those are watts, those are watts. Everything's good. If those were kilowatts, I'd want kilowatts and so on. Um, but uh, if one's watts and one's milliwatts, either convert them both to watts or both to milliwatts or something. They have to be the same. So I'm just going to warn you about that right there. Make sure the units match. Okay. So anyway, this is just a calculator exercise right here. So I, you want to use the button that says LOG. You'll notice you've got three choices of log button. There's a log button that looks like this. It's got a solid box right there and an empty box right there. There's a log button underneath it that looks like this. That's called a natural logarithm. And then there's a, a normal logarithm over here. That's the one you want. Use this key. Okay. So you'll find the three logarithm keys placed in approximately this uh, orientation. And uh, the one you want is the, the normal log, L-O-G, the old-fashioned log. In the old days, we didn't even have those, for goodness sakes. Use the standard log button. You'll know you got the right button if you get the same answer as me. So I go 10, log button, 80, divide by 2.5, close my parentheses, equals, bada-boom, bada-bing. I got 15 point, if I, if I want to be accurate about it, 15.05 decibels. I'd say 15 is my answer. But here I want to make a little point. The formula is saying 15.05 decibels. It's a nice thing for a formula to say. P.S. Uh, maybe I don't call it intuition. Maybe I, oh. P.S. Half-life approach. If we did this problem yesterday, uh, let's see now here. We would say, well, if I want to count decibels, that means I want to count half-lives. So take the 80, cut it in half, cut it in half. Cut it in half, cut it in half. Cut it in half, cut it in half. And you'll notice that we have one, two, three, four, five half-lives. And the idea that one half-life is three decibels tells me 15 decibels, right? So using it uh, that way, our rule of thumb, sort of back-of-envelope calculation approach, where we just say, well, count the half-lives. Oh, it's exactly five half-lives. Well, every half-life is three decibels, so it must be 15 decibels. You see that we get 15 decibels when you do it that way. The formula says, well, not necessarily 15. It's more like 15.05. So which one's right? Well, the formula's right, of course, but the rule of thumb is pretty darn good, you must admit. Three decibels as a half-life is pretty darn close. What's the percent error? Let me figure this out. 0.05 is the error. I divide it by the true answer of 15.05. And then I divide it by the 15.05, right? Wait, that's not... I did that wrong. 15.05 minus 15 is 0.05. Oh, 0.05. Divided by the correct answer, 15.05. Move the decimal over twice, and you end up with 0.33% error. I suppose I should write this here. 0.33% error. So that three decibels as a half-life is really, really close. Okay, so I always do it that way. I, I don't I don't walk around trying to remember formulas. A lot of people do. It, it amazes me how many people on the test will say, I'm going to memorize those formulas. Huh. It's like, man, you, you'd be a better card player than I. I hate playing cards because you have to memorize who played what card when, and I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> I don't like memorizing. So I just remember how it works. It works this way, three decibels per half-life. If you can go with that, you're fine. In fact, when I give the test in class, I, I do not... Uh, 
I do not give you these formulas. So you, you can memorize them if you want, but I'm telling you, this you can do the test this way. You can do the test this way. But to finish today and today's homework, let's go through the motions of practicing with these formulas. Next example. What's P in? I'm focusing right on the question, so it tells me which formula to grab. What's P in? Okay, I'll grab the P in formula. What's the P in formula? It's right here. P out times 10 to the tenth of a decibel. Okay, so P in is equal to P out times 10 to the tenth of a decibel. Okay, well, I guess we, uh, we plug these in, right? So it says it's 120 after the drop, which means that's the P out. So that's what goes here, the 120 milliwatts. And then you multiply that by 10 to the, not 9, but 0.9, right? 0.9. Because it says decibels over 10. So the 9 becomes a 0.9. And that's it. That's all you got to do on your calculator. 120 times 10 to the 0.9 power. Boom. We're getting... 953 about, and these were milliwatts, so this is still milliwatts. 953 milliwatts. So I guess the formulas are kind of quick, aren't they? Example 9. All right, this one looks a little more involved. Maybe not. 24 decibels per 100 feet. We got the P in. We want the P out. Okay, maybe I'll just go grab the P out formula now just to get that part done. The P out formula is this one. P in over 10 to the tenth of a decibel. P in over 10 to the tenth of a decibel. Cool. And they're telling us the P in is 16 watts. Cool. And now we got to figure out how many decibels it is. This is where you have to be careful, right? You, you, you don't solve math problems by just looking for numbers and saying, ooh, I'm going to grab the 24. Why? Because it's a decibel and I need a decibel. That's not a good enough reason. You got to work it out. You got to say, well, it's 24 decibels for every 100 feet. Do I have 100 feet? If I have 100 feet, then it really is 24 decibels. But I don't have 100 feet. I only got 25 feet. So that's only one fourth as much. You got to figure this out, right? Now remember from last time, um, half lives and power can be proportions. You can solve. Well, half lives and decibels and decibels and and uh, and length. Not the half lives and power. Half lives and what did I say last time? Never mind what I said last time. I'm going to say what I said this time. What I said this time was. So we can uh, we can do this as a proportion. It's 24 decibels for every 100 feet. So how many decibels will it be with only 25 feet? Okay. You can do that. The, the decibels in the feet, you can just make little proportions out of them. It's 24 every 100 feet, so how many is it in 25 feet? And if you do the cross product and all that stuff, you're going to come out with uh, six. Six decibels. Which, by the way, tells me instantly, you mean two half-lives? Oh, well then the 16 is going to go to an 8, which is going to go to a 4. I'm done. Except we're going to use the six decibels in our formula. So decibels over 10 would be 0.6. And let's see what we get when we go 16 divided by 10 to the 0.6 power. My calculator says 4.02 units will be the same watts. Okay. So the formula is really close to reality. Okay. What do we got? One more example? One more example. Example 10. Maybe you should chew on this one yourself for a bit and then come back. All right, what do we got going on here? I like to look for my powers first because, yeah, or here, just <laughs> look at what they want. They want PN. Okay, great. I'm going to grab the formula for PN, which is that what we just used here? No. Let me put them up here and grab it. The, for, the formula for PN is this one. P out times 10 to the tenth of a decibel. PN equals P 
out times 10 to the 10th of a decibel. And I'm just going to really make sure I grab the right formula. P in equals P out times. P in equals P out times. Right. There we are. That's the formula. What must P in be? So notice we got two things. Figure out what power out to plug in. Figure out how many decibels to plug in. We figure out what those two things are. We're done. We're done. We're golden. And uh, they told us that one. <laughs> Look at that. We're halfway done. So that's going to be the 800 microwatts, the signal out, the P out. So the decibels. Be careful with the decibels. Again, this is a terrible mistake. No partial credit if you do this kind of thing on your homework. If you say, oh, I'm going to grab the 15 decibels. Woohoo, I'm ready to fly. It's like, no, you're not. No, you're not. What this says is 15 decibels for 100 feet. Do I have 100 feet? That's your first question. No, I don't have 100 feet. I got more than that. If I got a longer cable, it's going to be more than 15 decibels as well. How many more? Get your proportion going. So it's 15 decibels for every 100 feet. How many decibels will that be in my wire, which is 325 feet? Okay, crisscross applesauce. And I'm just going to do that on my calculator. You know, the fastest way to do this on your calculator is to go 15 times 325, because those numbers are on the diagonal. And before you do anything else, just say divide by 100, because you know you're going to end up dividing by this 100. And you set it equals, and it comes out to 48.75. So in a 325 foot length of wire, it's not 15 decibels, it's 48.75 decibels. So what's my formula looking like over here? Let's try this again. Pn is equal to 800 microwatts. Now when things are getting weird, what you might want to do is, remember you can always use your times 10 to the x button, the one that's on the bottom center of your calculator. And remember micro is 10 to the minus 6. So I can enter it this way. And then times, so having done that, what I've done is I've, I've now made these just plain watts. 800 microwatts is the same as 800 times 10 to the minus 6 watts. So this will give me my answer in watts. And then if I have to, I can hit my eng button. See, that's my strategy here. So I got my 800 times 10 to the minus 6 watts times 10 to the... Take your decibels, which is 48.75, and you want a tenth of that, which means... 4.875, right? Slide your decimal back once. Now I start entering stuff on my calculator. So I'm actually going to do this in parentheses just to be safe. Parentheses, let me type out what I'm writing. Or let me write out what I'm typing. I'm typing a parentheses button. And then I'm typing my 800. And then I'm typing my little 10 to the X button front and center of your calculator. And then I'll hit the, the special negative button, which is kind of on the left side there towards the top. And then I'll put the 6 in, and then I'll close my parentheses. So let me actually type that. Okay, so parentheses, 800 times 10 to the x button, negative 6 button, close parentheses. Woo okay, now I'm going to say, uh, well, my habit is to use parentheses whenever I multiply, so I'll just do that now. So having two parentheses together means that we're multiplying. And then I put the 10 in here. 10. And then, of course, we have that button that looks like this, which is what you use to raise things to power, the X to a power button. And the power I want is the 4.875. And I'm going to close my parentheses after that. Ooh, I'm not going to close my parentheses right after that. Good thing I checked. Because after I hit the 4.875, my cursor is still up in the exponent, so I have to hit the down arrow once then hit the parentheses. So get down out of the exponent. Get down, get down. What, the down arrow doesn't work? Okay, the down arrow didn't work. Really good thing I'm checking myself here. I had to use the right arrow to get out. That got me back on the ground. Then I can close my parentheses. Then I can hit equals. And when I hit equals, the first thing I see is I see, well, I see a 59.99. You want to call that a 60? I don't even have to hit the eng button. I thought I might have to hit the eng button, but apparently I don't. So it's just about 60.0 watts because I've converted everything to watts.
How do you like that? 60 watts. If it came out to like 0.06 or something, I would have hit the eng button and said, ooh, so many milliwatts or whatever. 60 watts. Cool. Now, just because I'm curious, of course, could we do this with the rule of thumb? Well, kind of. For 40, this is like 16 plus half-lives. That's a plus. It's like 16 half-lives because 48 divided by 3 is 16. So this is over 16 half-lives. So if, I guess if you wanted to, you could have taken the 800 microwatts. And, and actually, since that's on the outside, I mean on the, on the out, the power out, you'd have to keep doubling that. But you'd have to do it 16 times. So I, actually, I'm not in the mood to check that. I'm going to trust the 60 watts. The formula tells the truth. I'm pretty sure I plugged in right. I think we're good to go. So cool. I guess that's our, our very last lecture for the term. I hope you enjoyed it. So we, whoops. So we, uh, again, the emphasis of this lecture was these formulas. You have to see them because you're going to see them later on in your courses. You'll see these formulas again. Uh, so I wanted you to at least get used to them, to have seen them, so they're kind of familiar. Um, you will save yourself a lot of grief if you're able to work with this idea that three decibels is a half-life, and especially if you understand what a decibel means. <laughs> Turn it down by three decibels, you've cut it in half. Turn it up by three decibels, you've doubled it. And remember that zero decibels does not mean zero power, it means baseline power. It means you're, you're idling, you're humming, or whatever. Woohoo, we're done. We're so done. We're so done. I'm going to end it. I'm going to end the stream. That's what I'm going to do.